So uh, uh, I titled our talk, uh, and I'm saying ours because uh, I have a lot of Kathleen's voice in my head and Andy's, uh, and the invitation came to the three of us, uh, but it's mapping for changing mindsets, vocabulary connections, and positionality. Um, so I would like to start today by saying that I will not be talking about our current projects because, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's talk about other things. But we thought it would be helpful to start by showing snapshots of how we are testing um, the using of critical mapping to support movements on the ground. Uh, so uh, I will mention only two projects and very fast. Tachayeli, uh, which is a feminist verb in Arabic for imagine, the project engages with Ankenia. It's a neighborhood in Ramallah, which is Jerusalem North. Um, CMMM, it is a critical mapping of municipal movements, as Anna just said. Um, and it works in Berlin, Belgrade, and Barcelona. So for the Khayali, um, the idea started around a decade ago, failing episodes, 2007, uh, we were lucky, we joined the Gender Urbanization and Global South, a transformative knowledge network project. Um, it's a global project, multi-site, um, but yeah, uh, let's not delve into the details. The keywords are uh, feminization of urban poverty, women's right to the to safety and the city, countering infrastructural violence and spatial imagination as resistance to social, economic and spatiocide um, and communication. So in Tekhayali, we are using classical methods of mappings, collages, graphics, illustrations, uh, but the thing we are most excited about at the moment is, um, some uh, what, what I'm going to show you now, which are a few of the future scenarios for proposals for the Tachayeli project, and they are produced mainly out of what you saw first. So these are four examples, and it is very everyday women remaking their entire neighborhood uh, area. Um, and the second project, it is the CMMM. Um, and our keywords are right to housing, activating the preemptive buying right in Berlin, uh, tenants indebtedness and enabling cooperative housing in Belgrade and revealing evictors and stopping evictions in Barcelona. So what we are doing, we did a glossary, we did um, a an interactive timeline that hopefully soon will be online for the Belgrade chapter, hopefully, um, and many other things that I don't want to get to, but I show these examples to just give you an idea of the broad spectrum we, are, we come from. Um, so uh, these projects um, are more or less the um, keys. The first thing I want to highlight just before going into the case, sorry, I jumped points, is that um, these are not all my ideas, but there's no space for me to mention everybody who uh, um, I'm having conversations with. And um, I by no intention mean to say that they agree to everything I say. I need to put this disclaimer very much outside at the beginning. Um, and third, um, I come from a background of uh, growing with a physics professor. So everything for me is scientific thinking through biology and physics and these rules. Um, and I will not read the text that I wrote afterwards because in order to, short, to shorten the time, the point I want to get to is that we always um, end up getting crises. So the COVID was supposedly unexpected. The newcomers uh, wave, the migration in 2015 was supposedly unexpected. Uh, but in all the cases, we know the science was there. We know that they were asking us to uh, make scenarios. It's not rocket science. It's because what Onelala Soleloa said at the UN uh, in July 2016, she said, because poverty is still a lucrative business. And practically, this is what I think globally we are up against, whether we're talking about municipalist movements in Europe or in um, uh, the whole globe. So these keys, uh, what they unlock for me are uh, the rules of the game. So uh, the mother of all rules for creating an emancipatory social transformation movement is changing mindsets as we all know, which by default requires dignity and hope, which by default implies enablement as everyday intrinsic behavior that materializes in all scales and kinds of routines from home care to sophisticated decisions at work. But also this includes reestablishing the personal and the collective as continuum, not as opposites, nor framing of the collective as necessitating costly personal sacrifices. Therefore, municipalist mappings should focus on capturing and echoing narratives. Um, because uh, this is how, how intersectional understandings, if we want to use the scientific, the scholarly term, uh, comes about. 
changing mindsets requires folklore stories. So it is seldom that numbers of CO2 nor the billions of tons of scholarly data and texts that they are the things that influence people's decision when they're starting in front of a supermarket or booking a ticket. So, um, but how do we get people to be conscious about that? We were discussing this in the morning in another meeting. Um, so um, I forgot to keep showing Kathleen um, and you can click another two. Thank you. Um, our ethical compass is that of care and care labor. I um, don't want to get into that, but um, just to put it out there and to say that our guiding principle is that the process is what defines the product and not the other way around. So we are constantly changing, deliberating. The Sabatistas say, caminando preguntamos, we walk and say. So to conclude this introduction into my talk, um, I want to say that our, we work on the vision that um, is that of resistance as infrastructure, not as event. Uh, which was a phrase that was used by Umar and elaborated by Muna, Noura, and Samia and Faye in their panel, which I'm showing the ad for a few weeks ago. It has also been very communicated by many other people. Um, but so I'm going to jump again. If you wish, we can come back to this vision and why we work on it. Um, I'm moving my hand without the post that. So the, what Anna and uh, Puli, when they wrote to us, they said that's discuss the potentials and uses of cartographies and mappings by social movements across the globe. Um, well, seeing that Zevra and Jose um, are going to be here talking, we thought, uh, and since many people in many places speak different languages, have mediums. So instead of getting into the nuances, let's get into what we think are the learnings. So I will be speaking less about examples, but more about learnings, while at the same time showing uh, many of the examples of the visual items I've collected along the past, past months. Um, so let us return to the question that many of you have been asking and looking for answers to, and many of you have answers to probably better than mine. Uh, can critical mapping help shift power paradigms on matters of everyday politics, decision-making, uh, mobilize the critical mass into uh, municipalist movements? So uh, in one of the activities uh, we conducted with a project last year, Cindy Katz, she said, uh, yes, if, there is, a, there is an if there, which is that if the maps and mappings and their processes are consciousness raising, so they produce tangible shifts in behavior and or the lives of those involved in the making and in the post-production deliberations. So everyday politics in all its messiness, economic, environmental, precarity, bodies, da, da, da. So um, let's think about the whole spectrum from the legal zero pound contracts in London um, and until the child in Bangladesh doing the H&M t-shirts, the legal and the quasi-legal. In the end, it is the result is the same, which is that slavery is still very much a present day issue, but it's not on the political agendas. And for me, from my perspective, I wonder why I don't, maybe it's me and my research is too short, but I am not finding much resonance in electoral programs of movements talking about how do we deal with issues of slavery? Not just racism. I mean, racism is the problem. Slavery is the consequence. So how do we do, do with, deal with both? Uh, for me, the recent demonstrations and uprisings in Cali directly implicate the post-World War II international political paradigm. So, by which, uh, which by default implicates everyday consumers in Madrid uh, and tourists sorry, consumers in and tourists from Berlin, Madrid, and Vilnius that received its Ryanair flight after Roman Protasche, Pro, I apologize for not knowing the right pronunciation, and his girlfriend Sofia were abducted by Lukashenko. If we, well, let's remember that um, their case remains unresolved. Is somebody? And this summer, Lukashenko starts his 28th year as president of Belarus. Thousands have been abducted, incarcerated, and wounded, and several oh, Multiply Lukashenko by 10, and we get the CC. Next to CC yes. is Saudi Arabia. I don't think we have. I have to read what I wrote, um, which even abducted a prime minister. Um, and yeah, the European politicians, they repeatedly, for me, fail to uphold the same principle of untastbarkeit dimension, the inviolability of human uh, dignity, 
to persons who are not white or West European persons. So returning to the question for me, it becomes, um, are we persons? Um, are we debating openly and critically through the plague of racism and the need of application of principles of universal human rights? I am not going to explain the Big Bang that you all know, um, um, but whatever the term global South underdeveloped, these are geographies of resistance against continued systematic dispossession and pressing into vulnerability that started with empires. Colonialism is far from over, and that is why we, mappers, activists, scholars, etc., should stop using the term post-colonial, among many other misleading terms. Um, housing, which is a burning issue for uh, new European uh, municipalist movements, is a, as we know, a global crisis and is part of the worries of the Lebanese uh, revolution. In Beirut in 2015, an average apartment was worth 105 years of minimum wage in a country whose name has become synonym to inflation and devaluation of currency. Beirut Medinati and the larger scene of revolution in Beirut is a good example of how an emancipatory social transformation movement is utilizing municipalism as medium and diverse kinds of mappings as consciousness raising tools. The many decentralized engaged actors embody the critical practice of mapping as process where it is not about creating maps, which they are super good at, but uh, uh, at the forefront, it's about critically mapping uh, the multifaceted practices that combined give shape and voice to some of the networks of the dispossessed and those devoted to them. And along the process, they have created a new terminology on the ground. Therefore, many of their individual and collective activities and mappings build on uh, thorough analysis that feed from and into lived and tangible acts of micro and macro reclaiming of rights, places and landscapes and everyday aesthetics. These become reminders of resistance to the, uh, and the revolution on everyday basis. Their work also uses the slang of the virtual world, all you can think about uh, which many movements are using now in uh, Europe. So, um, but tackling the housing crisis and tackling the crimes means accountability. I'm going to jump my text here, but practically what I want to get to this, uh, the result we can see the, the hope that the popular vote uh, said, let's hold people accountable. But the fact is that the system has not been changed. And I think that without holding accountability here in Europe, a big part of the problems both in Europe and outside of Europe will not be um, held. So what is the uh, role of mapping for municipalist movements? I think um, it is uh, <laughs> that, you know, the mayor that passes public uh, uh, property to the hands of speculators for me is no better than that who passes trash to Africa and no better than that who makes fu uh, fun summer camps for kids in uh, countries where no natives are still stripped of even basic rights. So when we think about Colombia and when we think about uh, uh, Yafa. So uh, jumping to the next, that's so... Um, um, yeah, it says this, uh, what I was trying to say, kullon yani kullon, which is all, means all in, if it's just a slogan of the Lebanese revolution. Um, the, for the European municipalist movements, this means that they should position themselves clearly with global anti-racist struggles. Uh, BIPOC movements do not want peace a la post-Franco regime where parents still don't know where their children are or whether alive at all, nor peace a la post-apartheid in South Africa that piece that neither returned the stolen nor gave the traumatized lives the solace of holding the criminals accountable. We want to be heard and our disruptive na narratives acknowledged. So um, the case of Namibia for me is phenomenal because uh, practically Heiko Maas in the same quote says, oh, we want consideration, but uh, uh, conciliation of narratives, but we don't want to listen to the representatives, but I'll jump it for time. Um, so from my perspective, and this is from uh, the map of uh, the ENM, we're, we're directly talking to you. I'm now already wrapping. So um, from my perspective, what is timely, what is pressing, it would be to have an anti-racist positioning layer, such, uh, uh, as, such kinds as the ENM map. So I don't know what the ENM means uh, under embracing municipalist values. Anna posted it this morning, but because Today has been phenomenal. I have not had the time to relink the presentation to them, 
But what I was thinking when I saw the link that you sent me last night was, oh, how cool if this embracing municipal values has some kind of drop menu where you can get, okay, year 2021, which municipalist movements have actually taken a stand with uh, against mass, against the German government saying, no, we are with, we hold ourselves with the Namibians and their call for um, reparations, not only say acknowledgement of it being uh, uh, genocide. Um, especially in regard of all the other Africans uh, who are living in, in different European cities today and make up part of the people who are, are in the municipalist movements. Um, so I want to, uh, here I had put a, a fast reminder that um, the recent tectonic shifts in power in Palestine uh, would not have been possible without the Black Lives Matter momentum since George Floyd. Um, and I think the same applies to other cases. But if it was possible for Palestine now, because of building of such solidarities and momentums and where mappings and visuals play the critical role, then it can happen for other places. I don't think we should uh, uh, underestimate the uh, grounds we are winning. Um, so I'm going to go to the next ones that and say that uh, what is commonly referred to as the TikTok revolution Palestine today, um, it has dignity and hope as its slogan and as a compass. Um, like in uh, Beirut, Medinati and all stories, the dignity and hope movement did not come out of nothing. It is a long story that I will not bore you with, but I would like to close my talk with pointing out what I think were its three main pillars, which I already described for Beirut, Medinati. So one, it is the multitude and variation of deep and rich scholarly and investigative materials that get mobilized at the moment of ishtibak, engagement, as Rana Bakker captured it. Uh, and an example here is, for example, I'm very happy to be speaking together with uh, uh, Jose because, I mean, his project, uh, Cartografiando uh, Gaza, I mean, it is one of these materials what, uh, what I have in mind when I am uh, saying that there is that multitude. Um, and that there are a lot of uh, a lot a lot a lot of outspoken people who are talking and talking and talking Palestinians and otherwise who are sharing this wealth that they did. So, um, like my friend uh, Dejani from Sheikh Jarrah, whose family stands to be evicted again. So, and two, it is um, spraying stencils like this one saying resist because your hands are the tornado and the hundreds of names and pictures of those being arrested by those the Pal by both the Palestinian Authority and uh, the Israeli apparatuses in Haifa and uh, Ramallah alike. And of course, the countless other images from street cleaning, painting, and equally the everyday brutality of vulnerable people like vulnerable people. Um, and third, uh, if we are able to map the social toolkits and by default, the social media toolkits, we will have a rich picture of how many individuals operationalize their networks to amplify and multiply the echoes of the narratives streaming live from Palestine. There were numerous numbers of petitions of solidarity and what can be seen as public statements of commitment for anti-Palestinian racism, including support for the BDS movement that is criminalized in many places in Europe. In this same category is a multitude of revolutionary music uh, uh, genres that have been growing and reconnecting all of historic Palestine over the past decade, like hip hop, trap, electronic, alongside the more classical genres. Until this spring, people mostly referred to Ramallah as the green zone or five star prison and to its cultural and artist scene as a bubble and as a disconnected and ineffective sector. I think the past weeks, couple of months have dismantled this common conception and showed that these were decentralized work camps of creating new social commons and defining what is new social contracts, what these are. And this is why social infrastructures are systematically heavily bombed and looted. This is still an ongoing revolution and there are many uh, people mapping, but not all people are talking, which brings me to my last summary slide. Um, the needed kinds of mapping in municipalism are many, not one, but one kind of needed mappings are those that are consciousness raising, that give evidence of life and social emancipation through creating dignity, maintaining hope and enabling personal fulfillment, even if little. This starts with changing vocabulary, but not to come with new jargon terms, rather use the language of the street. The street language is what will make today's narratives of resistance everyday folklore. 
These mappings should be experiential and produce connections. The process should try wherever possible to resituate slow time that capitalism robbed us of. The processes of doing mapping, drawn, verbal, imaginary, etc., these are themselves important social spaces that feed from the reality of bordered and containerized bodies. And they can, the mappings, if wanted and tactical, they can echo these ones into the boundless virtual worlds of the internet. Mappings are spaces of encounter along long life journeys. To be flexible and reflexive, they should use the tactic of temporariness and understand the rhythm of the battles between the wars, as one Israeli general phrased it. And as my presentation traced out, building connections and solidarities requires cross-generational communication and a social contract of enabling and enablement as individual and collective mindset, a social ethos of the critical mass. Enablement means that people who can should articulate their positioning publicly to be the human shields for those vulnerable and gagged. Therefore, mapping does not necessarily mean publication, filtering and recording are fundamental. Anonymity and lack of information is, always, is not always a bad thing. A different way to look at zeros and data in data is necessary. These three and some more are the basis for rethinking and remaking resistance from that of events to that as lived infrastructure, as I said in our vision. So uh, embedded symbology in mappings on paper and in mapping stenciled on streets is key for disrupting the paradigms, the patriarchal and racist and sexist mental frames that form the reference, the frame of reference for decision-making from everyday people up to the pyramid to the top. So thank you for staying with me along my longish presentation that I also jumped in many times. And I wish us all a summer of watermelons.